Korea just because they hate Trump. We were also very wrong, folks. Most everyone thought that Antifa had hit their lowest low when they ran around attacking the elderly and burning family cars. Nope. Now these lunatics have found an all-new ally in their resistance of President Trump which shows just how insane their ideas really are. Antifa is defending Kim Jong-un's fascist regime and saying Donald Trump is the real problem. So let's get to the meat of this whole thing. You have two major Antifa organizations, Refuse Fascism and Worker World Party, who both hate the president. They hate him so much that after the August 5th UN Security Council meeting where more sanctions were put on North Korea, the two groups united to defend their fascist heroes. Refuse Fascism for example, described the event as the largest military power in the world bullying a small, isolated country and terrorizing the people of that entire region. They also claimed that the U.S. was using a playbook of demonization against the defenseless Kim Jong-un. Totally untrue. The Workers' World Party is just as bad. They are a Marxist group that puts out their own propaganda like self-defense and the DPRK and Korea won't be intimidated. Two editorials suggesting the U.S. is the real threat and North Korea is being oppressed. So these are the people in the U.S. we are dealing with. They are not fighting for human rights. They are not fighting against Trump. They are fighting to bring down the Constitution and everything we hold dear. Help share this out and show them we will not be intimidated by Antifa or North Korea. Watch now. More. Related. Breaking News 24 IT's on. James Mattis just put the fear of God in North Korea with two terrifying words. Defense Secretary James Mattis isn't playing games when it comes to the threat from North Korea. After North Korean leader Kim Jong-un tested a hydrogen bomb, Secretary Mattis had only two words to describe what is about to happen to his country. Total Annihilation Defense Secretary James Mattis warned Pyongyang against aggression against the United States or its allies, saying it would trigger a unified world response and what he termed the total annihilation of a country, namely North Korea. Any threat to the United States or its territory, including Guam, or our allies, will be met with a massive military response, a response both effective and overwhelming, Mattis told reporters in the White House driveway. Kim Jong-un should take heed in the United Nations Security Council's unified voice. All members unanimously agreed on the threat North Korea poses and they remain unanimous in their commitment to the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Because we are not looking to the total annihilation of a country, namely North Korea, but as I said we have many options to do so. Due to a failed nuclear agreement made during the Clinton administration, North Korea's nuclear capabilities have grown extensively. North Korea advanced its program throughout the Bush and Obama administrations, bringing the U.S. to the risky situation it now faces. Unlike Obama, James Mattis and President Trump are men of action, and they will not sit idly by while American lives are put at risk. Those days are over. Watch now. More. Related. Breaking News 24 Journalists won't sleep tonight after seeing what Trump is about to do this Tuesday. According to Politico, President Trump will end the Obama-era program that granted work permits to undocumented immigrants under the DACA program. Trump is fulfilling his promises. The administration has worked tirelessly to scrap the program despite the opposition from the Republicans in the House and Senate. According to two sources inside the White House, Trump has been deliberating on the decision for the past couple of months. It was Jeff Sessions that finally convinced him to terminate the program and put in the hands of Congress. The president is expected to make the announcement on Tuesday. Speaker Paul Ryan has already been told. Florida Senator Marco Rubio said that Congress needs to protect the Dreamers. My hope is that as part of this process we can work on a way to deal with this issue and solve it through legislation, which is the right way to do it and the constitutional way to do it, Rubio told CNN in June. 
Rep. Steve King disagrees and thinks that Trump needs to act quickly on DACA. He has expressed frustration on Sunday that it hasn't gone into effect yet. Let's show our president our support. Share this if you think it's time to end Obama's legacy and to establish the rule of law in this country once again. Watch now. More. Related. Breaking News 24. Kill shot right after the media attacked him, Ben Carson just went off in the best way possible. Secretary of Housing and Urban Development Dr. Ben Carson is a reserved man, but he is also a man who will always stand up for what's right. On Wednesday New York Magazine issued a report saying that tasked whether there was anyone home at HUD saying Carson's department was empty and quoting an anonymous source that said Carson was unqualified and not respected as a leader. Carson put the magazine on blast in an interview on Fox News special report with Brett Baer, saying, I would say that you should ring the doorbell before you conclude that nobody's at home. I don't think they did a very good job at journalistic investigation there. He commented on Trump's proposed 15% budget cut for HUD, saying that he has already helped save money in the department through reorganization and increased efficiency. Do recognize with some of the reorganization that we've done already, we've realized some tremendous savings. This is a concept that is foreign to a lot of people in Washington, the whole concept of efficiency and saving. Whoa! A government official who is finally sticking up for American taxpayers and trying to run an efficient operation. I never thought I'd see the day. Carson continued saying even long-term bureaucrats are going to be a part of the reorganization. So we are actually reimagining the way that HUD works right now from the bottom up, including the vision of the people who have been there 10, 20, 30, 40 years, rather than just imposing things upon them. He gave a knockout interview, check it out here. President Trump has picked some awesome people for his team, and Ben Carson is easily one of the best. He's helping the government cut down on waste, putting the media in its place, and doing it all the grace and class. Love Ben Carson. Give him a share. H.T. The Hill Watch now. More. Related. Breaking News 24 Madonna finally leaves America after threatening Trump, look where she's going. Madonna thrives on being weird. This Saturday. Madonna showed all her fans a major announcement on her two posts on Instagram. The 59-year-old Trump-hating maniac is officially moving to Portugal. She is apparently working on a movie and making some new music. Here is the image she posted of her standing over two tree stumps with her legs spread open over a boat sailing through it. Legs open is a posture that Madonna most likely assumes often. She then revealed the following three announcements. The energy of Portugal is so inspiring. I feel very creative and alive here and I look forward to working on my film Loved and making new music. Comma began Madonna. This will be the next chapter in my book. It is time to conquer the world from a different vantage point, she wrote. Madonna said that she made the move to Europe because of her mental health. That sound accurate. I used to be a basket case but now I live in Lisbon, she said. According to the AP, her spokesperson said that the singer said she fell in love with the country after ending a tour there in 2004. Madonna is currently directing a movie called Loved. This is a perfect title. Because nobody in America loves Madonna. I've always felt oppressed. I know a lot of people would go, oh, that's ridiculous for you to say that. You're a successful white, wealthy pop star, but I've had the ass kicked out of me for my entire career, and a large part of that is because I'm female and also because I refuse to live a conventional life. I've created a very unconventional family. I have lovers who are three decades younger than me. This makes people very uncomfortable. Remember what Madonna said about blowing up the White House? Watch that below. Let's hope that Madonna stays in Portugal. Share this everywhere if you hope she doesn't ever come back. Watch now. More. Related. Breaking News 24.
doctors don't want you to see this 42-year-old secret to looking so young, it's in your kitchen. At first glance, you might think that she's a college student. False. Laura Shu is about to be 42 years old. Her secret to staying young is very simple and it is shocking thousands of people. Laura is an interior designer that was noticed by the public because of her sister Sharon HSU. Sharon is 35 and an actress. She was invited to an entertainment show in 2015. In the same year, Sharon shared a post on Facebook to celebrate Laura's 40th birthday. Her fans were absolutely shocked. See the nine sexiest pictures of her below. 1. Laura Shu is 42. She might look very young, but she is much older than she appears and has amassed a large following online because of it. 2. Let her teach you some things about health below. The secret to her good looks are simple. It's the reason a lot of people are following her. You gotta see what it is below. 3. She's called the goddess with a frozen age, according to E.T. The secrets to her good looks can be seen on the next page. She is almost wrinkle-free at 42. 4. Here is a video of her. Her Instagram has gotten thousands of followers and her Facebook account is followed by 350,000 people. Journalists can't stop raving about her. Watch now. More. Related. Breaking News 24 Brilliant. President Trump just created the ultimate plan to drain the swamp and defeat traitorous Republicans. President Trump will reportedly be ending the DACA program that the Obama administration unlawfully put in place. The program grants work permits to illegal immigrants who arrived in the country as children. President Trump won't be ending the program immediately however. Instead, Trump put in place a genius strategy to expose traitorous Republicans who face elections in 2018. President Trump is delaying the termination of DACA for six months. The six-month delay means DACA still ends, but Republicans have to choose between virtue signaling or their loyalty to the president during their primaries in 2018. There is literally no way they can stay silent on the issue when it's pushed back so far. Neither the House or the Senate have enough votes to get a saved DACA bill on the president's desk, nor do they have the votes to override a veto. By pushing the termination of the program back six months, Trump is forcing GOP hypocrites to expose themselves right as people start paying attention to the elections in their state. The DACA program will end in April, only a month before May which is when most primaries are held. There is no way the issue won't come up during debates, town halls and press conferences. Every single Republican in Congress railed against Obama when he made this unconstitutional move. Now we will see who really meant it. If ever there was a way to drain the swamp, this is it.